introduction, I want to say that the sexual behavior that was common in Paul's time, both in Greece and in Rome, was a scandal even to pagan thinkers. The pagans themselves were shocked by the wickedness that was going on during that time. Barclay, William Barclay, referring to our text, he wrote this, and I want you to listen carefully. He said, it might seem that this passage is the, the work of some almost hysterical moralist who was exaggerating the contemporary situation and painting it in colors of rhetorical hyperbole. It describes a situation of degeneracy of morals almost without parallel in human history. He goes on to say, but there is nothing that Paul said that the Greeks and Roman writers of the age did not say themselves end of quote says Paul was not exaggerating amen our texts have been referred to by a president of the United States as an obscure passage of scripture uh, back in the um, Obama administration but this passage is not obscure. This passage is alive and well. Um, I, I want to share some things. I, I preach often. I preach the weightier matters. I, I deal with things that um, sometimes they they're not catchy, uh, but I, I try uh, to preach God's truth and to make you think. Goal is to be thought-provoking. I hope, I hope in the end you feel better, but I really want you to think. See, I want you to shout. I want you to be happy. I want you to get blessed, but I want you to think because we're, we're up against thinkers. There are consequences um, to our actions. And women, tonight I want you to know that you're going to see that whether you know it or not, uh, you are in, in a sense, among other things, and I'll give you some of those other things as I preach, you are a barometer. You are you. You are a mechanism for measuring changes. Praise the Lord. You, 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 you give us some idea of the atmospheric pressure and the things that are going on in society. Um, Tristan, Tristan Bridges and Mignon R. Moore uh, wrote an article. I won't read the whole thing. I just want to say this, and it works with our women's convention. It says, last spring, one of us was talking with a heterosexual African-American male friend who said he'd been surprised to learn that his niece, Amani, whom he believed to be straight, was thinking of inviting a girl to the prom. Amani did not identify as lesbian, but hinted that she might be bi. Her uncle wondered 
whether Amani had always felt as if felt she was LGB or whether her declaration was part of some new trend among young people. Perhaps young people perhaps thinking outside of the box. Let me just come and give a little commentary. That is a, a phrase to think outside the box. That's a phrase that I uh, all but despise. I know that there are places where it is appropriate to use, but now thinking in many cases, especially in the world of religion, in the church world, when we talk about thinking outside of the box, many times the box that these people want to think outside of is the Bible. And we're not called to think outside of this. We are closed canon preachers. We believe that God opened the canon with Genesis and he closed it with Revelation. And we preach from Genesis to Revelation. And we don't step outside of that box. Amen. So be careful how you use that phrase. Amen. So he thought maybe perhaps she was thinking outside the box when it came to their sexualities. Indeed, Amani is among a growing number of women of color who identify as bisexual or lesbian. But what this trend means for her and other uh, women like her is complicated by how sociologists often measure and make sense of sexual minority identities. Consider a question that sounds deceptively simple but has motivated a great deal of scholarship. How many homosexual, lesbian, and bisexual people are there in the United States? Estimating the size of the sexual minority population is a challenge for a collection of reasons related to Amani's statement. Where does Amani fit in the current social landscape of sexual identities. Where does she fit? Would everyone counter, encounter her? Would everyone encountering her story understand her sexuality in the same way? How will Amani ultimately decide to sexually identify? You know, a few years ago, they were telling us that you didn't have a choice. Now the question is, how will she decide to identify? And will that identity stick? Or might it continue to change over the course of her life? Things are changing. The General Social Survey has concluded a question about sexual identity since 2008. Asking respondents to classify themselves as homosexual, because you know I don't use the word gay, I never have. The reason I don't is because that was a term that they selected in 1986 to use it um, as a euphemism. The meeting was how do we get away, get Americans to accept homosexuality? So we got to first come up with a term that, hom that Americans will accept. The term that they grasped hold to was gay. Said because after all, what could be wrong with being gay? Gay means happy. So they said, we don't want you to call us homosexual, call us gay. And it's amazing how many preachers, and missionaries, and teachers, and even while preaching against it, use their language. Let me tell you, in a PR battle, he who controls the language most of the time wins the war. Let us continue to use 
Bible language. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of the Bible. I'm not ashamed of, of the Elizabethan King James language. I still love the thou sh shalt not, thou shalt. Amen. All of that. You're quickly identified as a church person when you talk like that. Some of us don't want to be identified anymore. But uh, how do we respond to them uh, as uh, homosexual, lesbian, and uh, bisexual, heterosexual, or straight, or don't know? Listen to this. Between 2008 and 2016, those identifying as lesbian, homosexual, or bisexual rose from 2.7% to 5.4%, a 100% increase in just eight years. Now, if you recall... I'm going to leave it alone, but I have to because I paid, I prophesied. The man just said, I'm a, I'm a seer. I said during those years that if we legalize this stuff, so, you know, all of Raleigh turned on me. But I said, this is bad. And it was, it was made a primary agenda to pass same-sex marriage, get homosexual in the military, uh, where they can serve openly, get transgenders, everything they wanted, they got for 2008 to 2016. And consequently, while our first African-American president was promoting this for African-American preachers to show their solidarity, preachers softened their preaching against it. Now the empirical numbers are showing that during that time, there was a 100% increase. Blood is on our hands. Blood. The numbers are coming back now. I took all kinds of hits from leaders far and near. Wouldn't don't know that. They ain't the only sin. It was the only one that they were trying to make legal. See, you know, it's still, uh, look, adultery is still on the books. It's against the law. Stealing is still on the books against the law. You don't hear me. And while we were playing, the devil was on a pole and began to mess with the minds during this women convention of our women. Now, I, you know, when I preach, that all of my preaching is substantive. Even when I'm laying the foundation, you have to pay attention to everything that I say. There's a method to my madness. I told you, opening the message, that women are a barometer. I said something to you then. See. Now, this shows that there was a 100% increase in just eight years, the distri distribution within these identities has changed too. In 2008, more people were identifying as lesbian and homosexual than as bisexual. By 2016, bisexual had become the more prevalent sexual minority identity and that's bad because whether it's a man or a woman sister you got to make sure your boyfriend don't like men that's right. yeah. See, it's, very, it's, very, it's a very real chance now that when he leaves you he goes to get with a fella then leave the fella and gets back with you because he's not homosexual he's bi and she may leave you and get with her. It puts a whole new uh, twist on the sister's night out. Preach 
These things are real. Amen. Some of you can't say amen. amen. I understand why you can't, because you didn't see it, but you should have got with me. I didn't need to be explained. I, I didn't need an interpreter. All of my words were clear. The evidence showed that I was operating under the Spirit of God even when some prophets and prophetesses didn't see it. God's man saw what was going on and said it. You're not praying for me. I'm headed somewhere. I'm headed somewhere. Gallup um, polls show, it estimates that 4.5% of Americans are LGBT based on respondents' self-identification as being lesbian, homosexual, or transgender. I'm, I'm headed somewhere with this. And uh, uh, as an aside, I thought I would bring this up. Uh, in the Satanic Temple, and, and you all will see this tomorrow, there is, uh, in the Satanic Temple, uh, the Satanists, these are their numbers, um, more than 50% of our members in the Satanic Temple where they bow before the Baphomet. You know the Baphomet? Yes, that creature that looks like a goat yeah, right, right. with the pentagram, the same star that the Eastern stars use. The pentagram. They bow before it. it says more than 50% of our members is LGBTQ. It would be a conservative estimate to say that more than 50% of our members are that way. The head of the Satanic Temple said this in an interview. There, is, there has always been a connection between this perversive behavior and the devil. Daniel tells us that the Antichrist will not have the desire for women. Daniel said that. That's Bible. And um, you got to realize that if the most powerful expression of worship was that of a man and a woman coming together. The Bible says Adam knew Eve and she conceived. If that was the most powerful expression of worship, he said he knew her. The Greek word is, the Hebrew word is yada. When they came together, that was worship. Well, then the antithesis of that is two men coming together or two women coming together. See, that is, that, that is the antithesis of the order that God put in the earth. And no, no human being uh, uh, should be allowed to change that. Uh, this is just hot off the press. You know, Representative John Lewis, you know, civil rights icon, and he's a preacher. And yet, uh, this man uh, is calling for, um, uh, they didn't take a vote on it, thank God, but when they do things like this, it, this it's called the trial balloon, to see how it floats. I'm, going, I'm preaching now. They are calling uh, for 60 alleged hate groups that include mostly socially conservative and some religious based groups uh, to strip them of their 501c3 tax exempt status and why does Reverend Representative John Lewis want to strip these 501c3 uh, groups of their status. It says for opposing, among other things, for opposing homosexuality and LGBT ideology in general, just for opposing it. He doesn't. He don't want to strip them for of their 501c3 status for 
hanging a homosexual. For lynching a homosexual. For tar and feathering any member of the LBGTQ and however many alphabet community. But by a nondescript word, a vague term at best, opposing. Come on, come on. I think if any and, and and to oppose it, the new definition of hate is to simply oppose. To oppose. Uh, and there's no there's no explanation uh, given to what oppose mean. It's open. Well, uh, North Carolina third, we're all 501 C3. And all of us oppose, disagree with uh, aberrant sexual behavior and lifestyles. And, and if, if you don't, uh, you better keep it a secret. <laughs> you won't be a part of NC third long. Can't do that because we get our ideology from the Bible. See, what's being, here's what, what ladies, what, you, what I'm trying to get you to see is what's under attack is not just your local church. See, leaders, you can't be narrow in your thinking. What's under attack is biblical Christianity. The goal of the uh, LBGT is to shut down Christianity because Christianity is the religion. What, what is the problem with Christianity? The problem with Christianity is it is the one religion that don't let you set your own morals. Christianity tells you what to do. Christianity is filled with thou shalt. Thou shalt not. And you can't do this. And you can't do that. Christianity, come out of this. Come out of that. Be holy. That Christian stuff. So trial balloons are being put into the air. You know, most of the churches, pastors, you need to pray. M most of us. Uh, can't afford, not everybody's ministry is paid off. Can't afford to lose your 501c3 status because some saints won't tithe unless they can get a tax deductible. Some won't give unless they can get a tax deductible. Now, there are those who will do it anyway, but they're the minority. Praise the Lord. So if, if, if people can't get there, can't get it written off, they, they may not give. And, and so that's the devil launching trial balloons to try to hit at the heart. And then to use a preacher. A civil rights icon to promote such godlessness greatly complicates the situation. Can I get a witness? Amen. Barclay described ancient Rome in striking terms. This is another quote. He says, Vice did not stop with the crude and natural vices. Society from top to bottom was riddled with unnatural vices. 14 of the first 15 Roman emperors were homosexual. Also, just allow me to say this as I lay this foundation. Those who reject what they know of God. Remember our opening scripture says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Those who reject what they know of God, in so doing, divorce themselves from truth and reality. This means that, among other things, that a person out of touch 
with the reality of God is out of touch with reality, period. Yes, yes, Including the truth about humanity. To be out of touch with the meaning of humanity means a crisis of identity. Which is demonstrated in many ways. This also includes confusion concerning sexuality. So when you reject God, you reject a whole lot. When sexuality is misunderstood, the sheer power of unrestrained sexual drive and uneducated sexual insight will produce all manner of aberrant sexual behavior. Simply put, confusion about God breeds confusion about man which breeds confusion about sexuality, which produces sexual confusion and chaos. Oh, yes. And that's what we have today. Confusion and chaos. And they expect all of us to participate in this chaos. Men now call themselves women. And women now call themselves men. This is confusion and chaos and they want us to participate and some have in the name of enlightenment began to play the devil's game why do I preach about all of this stuff Bishop why bring all this stuff in so much uh, I understand the times see the last epic of the church age is the Laodicean church the layout of sin church. If you study the seven churches, if you study them properly, you also study the context and the times and the, uh, the things, the culture that each church had to face. And how, like the church at Pergamos, God told them, get out of those guilds. Get out of the guilds. The guilds, in those business guilds, in Pergamos operated much like unions, but more so like fraternities and sororities operate today. For each one of those guilds had a God that they had to take, give a ritual to. And when the Pergamos Christians got saved, now you couldn't hardly do business if you were not in a guild. But to be in the guild, you had to, you had to pledge and God called all of the believers out of the guild and said, now you got to trust me to make a way for you. Well, in the church of Laodicea, the, the, the culture of Laodicea had invaded the church. The laws, the attitudes, the sentiments, the sensibilities, and they had robbed the church of its fire. Rob the church of its hunger for God to the point where the church lost its drive. And the church said, I am increased with goods. I have need of nothing. I'm miserable and don't know. I'm blind and don't know. I'm sick and don't know. And I'll tell you something else. I'm Christless and don't know. Because Jesus is outside the church knocking, trying to get in, saying to the church, if any man will just hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in. I understand the church's relationship with culture and its times. And no God-fearing church practices uh, uh, abandonment theology. You, 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 you can't preach as though there is no outside world because folks spend more time in the outside world than they do in your church. People listen to the news more than they listen to your sermons. People read the newspapers more than they read the church newsletter. We can't pretend that the world is not what it is. 
For if we do, we make our members sitting ducks. Members have nothing to fight with. They have no talking points. They have no fodder. They have no scripture because they haven't heard anything. So understanding that the chaos of the world is trying to get into the church. Look at how because the world have rejected God. Look at how we fail to understand the role that sex plays. We do not understand how to control our sexual drive. We have unrestrained sexual drive uneducated sexual insight why do you go to get your first sexual insight you go to the scripture you go to the one who gave us sex you go and you don't have to read far you have to read long by the third child yes, praise the lord and god tells you what is far and the role that it is to play can i get a witness Amen. Last thing I want to say about this is that God made us male uh, and female. And then after making us male and female, he then called us to live the way he made us. He didn't, he didn't, he doesn't give us the right to remake. To reach, to change something. We are called to live. The way God made us. The Bible said that, that the woman is made for the man. The Bible says, but neither is the man without the woman. So if he made you a male or a female, then he's called us to live that way. This call, however, is being rejected. Sin disrupts God's order. Homosexuality bears witness to the disruption, to that disruption. God-given nature is thereby violated, Don Williams said, by homosexual acts. In our text, we see something wonderful. I'm preaching good. We see something quite wonderful and amazing. What is so wonderful in our text? It is that God chose to reveal himself. Amen. The God of the Bible revealed himself to mankind. And that knowledge, the knowledge that he gave them of himself in verse 21. Are you praying for me? That knowledge, even for the most primitive man, in its simplest form, was knowledge. Praise the Lord. Enough to lead man to glorify God and to be thankful. If man received it. But man didn't. Bible said because that when they knew God. He gave them enough knowledge to give him glory. And gave them enough revelation for them to be thankful. The Bible said they glorified him not as God. And neither were thankful. Who are the, the, the they? The they is humankind in general. It, it is the Greeks. It is the Romans. And the rest of us. Because he deals with the sins of the Jews in chapter 2. But here he's dealing with the Gentile world. Writing to the Romans. And the Romans were philosophers. Romans and the Greeks they were brilliant in their knowledge and God gave them a revelation of who of himself but they rejected it they didn't want to know about some pure God some holy God mm -mm. They, because when they knew God they glorified him not as God uh, see when let me just say this before I move on when when we know God that is uh, an expected transition from knowledge to response. When you know him, he expects you to respond a certain kind of way. See, people who don't glorify him and who don't thank him don't, don't know him. See, because when you know him, 
when you know him, glory automatically comes out of your mouth. Thank you comes out of your spirit when you know him. But if you don't know him, you'll sit there with your lips stuck out and say, what do I have to thank God for? What do I have to glorify him about? That's because you don't know him. But to know him is to glorify him. To know him is to thank him. And he was disappointed that when they knew him, when they knew him, they did not adequately respond. Can I get a witness? And because they did not adequately respond according to the text and they were not thankful, guess what happened? But they became vain in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Oh my, uh, the Greeks of Paul's day, despite their unquestionable brilliance, had taken the truth about God that was revealed to them and instead of allowing it to lead them to a knowledge of the true God, had arrived, they took that thing and they took it to the pantheon of gods, the temple where there were many gods. And, and all of those little gods that they made were gods with characters that was like them. They were wicked gods. They weren't holy gods. They were gods of all kinds of vices. And they took the true and living God and tried to put him in the pantheon of gods. The Greeks did it and the Romans were no better. And because they treated God like that. Preachers, hear me. Make sure you always make sure people know that you believe that there's only one God. We lost. Uh, I've told the story. I've told it before. We lost a student from our school the other day. People wanted to put their child in our preschool. Child's a Muslim. Parents are Muslim, but they loved our school. The curriculum is what it is. We've got five stars. I said five. The best. Crystal's doing a super job running it. I salute you. Got an awesome staff. And they wanted to put their child in. And it was, it was, it was explained that we're Christian. But they still wanted to do it. But the dad said, well, let me... Let me give us the over the give us the weekend to look over it. And the man looked me up online and heard my preaching. And called the school back and said, We will not be putting our child in your school because your pastor believes that the, the only there's only one God. That's right. That's right. And he believes that God is Jesus Christ. That's right. And so we will not be putting our child into that school. I said, Thank you, Jesus. See, because the conviction respects conviction. What Muslims are accustomed to, they're accustomed to dealing with wishy-washy Christians. Christians who take down, bow down, lay down, look down, act down. But when they run into somebody with some conviction, there is a measure of respect. They may not put the child in the school, but they know that there's somebody who believes that, that the God of the Bible the only true God that there is. And let me tell you, when you fail to treat God that way, I'm trying to preach, when you do, it doesn't matter whether you're the bishop, the supervisor, superintendent, administrative assistant, presiding bishop, it doesn't matter when we fail to glorify him as we all and to be thankful judgment is passed and guess what happens our reasoning our rationale our, our speculations our thinking becomes dark right. the bible said they became vain in their imagination and their foolish hearts was dark oh god oh god Oh, God, you, you're talking about judgment. One of the most powerful judgments is to turn people over to a dark way of thinking 
and the Holy Spirit don't even try to convict them anymore. Be careful how you reject God's truth. Because you know what he'll do? He'll leave you in a rejected state. And you'll say, well, I don't agree. And it won't even bother you because you rejected it. One time too many. Lord, don't turn me over to dark thinking. The Romans believed that they were right. The Greeks believed that they were right. Their wisdom, their philosophy, their rationale, their speculations were at the point of total confusion. Oh, totally devoid of spiritual insight. And yet they thought that they had insight. God turned them over. God turned them over. Because they were not thankful, he darkened their foolish hearts. Let me say this. The fool in scripture is the person who makes moral decisions contrary to God's instructions. He ain't got to act a fool. He can be a professor. He can have a PhD. He can be a banker. He can be a president. He can be a congressman, a senator. He can be the most articulate individual in town. But if he makes moral decisions contrary to God's instructions, the Bible says that that person is a fool. A fool is a person who adopts a stance that, a, that is in opposition to God's positions. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Oh, if this is the case, then there's a whole lot of fools in the world. I want to say tonight that we're not qualified to disagree with God. God is too mighty. He's too holy. He's too wise. He's too big. And uh, he lasts forever. The Bible says in Psalm 102, I feel the train leaving the station. And verse 25, oh, it says, Of old hast thou laid the foundations of the earth. And the, heavy, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou shall endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. And as a vesture thou, look at this, as a vesture thou shall change them. Change them like a person change clothes. Uh, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same. And thy years have no end. I want you to know the God of the Bible is from everlasting to everlasting. So we're not qualified to disagree with him. We can't let the world suck us in. I'm, I'm going home, but let me show you how the world will try to pull you in. We are in a day now, and preachers, I know that sometimes what I preach is hard. Uh, I feel at times like one crying in the wilderness. You know, uh, glory to God, a man died the other day, March, he died back in uh, 2017. He was a, a psy psychiatrist, a psychotherapist, that's what he was, George Weinberg. He was a psych psychotherapist who in the mid-1960s, he noticed something. He observed uh, the discomfort that many of his colleagues exhibited around members of the homosexual community. He noticed that they were just weren't comfortable. Being a psychotherapist, his colleagues didn't hit anybody. His colleagues didn't cuss anybody out. His colleagues didn't call anybody a name. They were just simply uncomfortable. And this man came up with a term that had become an official designation. He's dead now. Did I tell you he was dead? He's dead. He made up a term, and now even we are afraid to be called that term. He created a word to the, a word that was meaningless. A word to describe people who just was simply uncomfortable. I, I can understand why 
a man would be uncomfortable with a man who views him as a potential sex partner. I, I, I can't, I, you know, I can understand why a woman would be uncomfortable. I, I didn't say violent. I didn't say rude. I didn't say ugly. Just uncomfortable. I mean, if I know that that's what's going on in you, I don't even know how to take a compliment. You say to me, hey, man, I like that tie. I'm wondering what you're saying. You know, how do I need it? How do I take that? If, if, if I am a potential, if, if, you, if you see me and you're a man as a potential sex partner, I don't know how to, you, to take you saying, I like those shoes. That's right. What are you saying? I don't know. Because that's an unnatural desire. That's right. I'm not going to hit you. And he didn't see anybody hurting anybody. He just saw people uncomfortable. You know the phrase he came up with that he created? Homophobic. Now we call people a made up term. It's not Bible. It didn't come from God. It described a, it was a, a definite, a word looking for a definition. Came up with a term that essentially meant nothing to describe people simply being uncomfortable with folk living in a manner that the Bible said was wrong. And now that term have grown to describe a whole, it's to, to describe preachers who preach the Bible. Come on, sir. You can't now, not only can you not be uncomfortable, you can't preach scripture and or anything else without being labeled. This is the world. You know, I feel like tonight that I'm preaching uh, to some uh, Presbyterians and some two by fours. But it's all right anyhow. Oh, my. Yeah, he died. He lived to be 87. I hope he got saved. And he came up with the term. And now believers won't preach the truth because they're afraid that they will take a meaningless man-made term and apply that thing. Well, I would rather have God's term applied to me than to be afraid of man's terms. Can I get a witness? Time will not allow me to go all the way down and deal with the exchanges that took place. But verse 26 says, for this cause God gave them up. I'm headed to the women in just a minute. That is, God gave them over. This is the raft of God. Instead of sending down fire from heaven on the pagan idol worshipers, he did something more appalling. He gave man the absolute right to choose his own course of action and then gave him the perfect freedom to live with those consequences. That's why the text says, and they got their recompense, uh, which was meat. It says, if that's what you want, God gave them a divine have at it. One thing about God, if you just don't want him, He'll give you what you want. If you just don't want to be holy, then he'll let you go on and be wish-washy. If you just don't want to do right, then he'll let you go on in that. The raft of God is, uh, is often revealed uh, in God simply turning man over to himself. I often pray and I say, God, whatever you do, don't turn me over to myself. Mm-mm, Lord, keep your hands on me, Lord. Lord, keep my mind. I don't want to uh, be what the song says, just my imagination running away from me. Oh, no, God, sanctify my mind. Sanctify my heart. Oh, Lord, how many want God to keep you with a sanctified mind? Mm, how many want a mind, praise the Lord, that think thoughts? that the Lord is pleased with. He passed judgment over them. He gave them over to their own minds and let them do what they wanted to do. And then Paul said something, mother, that deals with uh, our convention. Hallelujah. He said, for even their women. Why did he use the word even? Even their women. In most cultures, women have been more reluctant than men to become involved in sexual promiscuity and homosexuality. Women have been a holdout. And the women, praise the Lord, were, 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 were reluctant to go along with this madness. 
Perhaps Paul mentions the women first because their practice of homosexuality was especially shocking and dismaying. In commenting on this verse, the theologian Charles Hodge wrote, Paul first referred to the degradation of females among the heathens because uh, they are always the last to be affected by moral decay. Oh Lord, and their corruption is proof that all is lost. When our women throw in the towel, Hodge said that that's proof that all is lost. I just showed you where this stuff is beginning to grow amongst our women. Ladies, whether it's fair or not, God have given you an assignment. Thank you, Jesus. God have called you to be holy. God have called you to be a barometer. I want to preach to the young ladies. I want to preach to the old ladies. I want to preach to the middle age. You better know that you have a role to play. And that God is watching you. And that we need you. We need you holy. We need you calling on Jesus. We need you. Hallelujah. Being reluctant. Still saying I'm going to walk up right. I pointed out some ladies last night who are engaged. Lady, please live holy. Young ladies, please walk up right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he tries to get you to do something that you all not do, you ought to push him back. Push him and put him back on his side of the couch and tell him, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. Oh, Lord, I don't have any help here, but I'm preaching anyhow. Ooh, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Look at what is going on in our community. Too many of our ladies are being turned out. Hallelujah. That's a disturbing trend. That's a disturbing sign. But ladies, tonight, God is calling you. You can be one or two things. You can be a thermostat or you can be a thermometer. The thermostat regulates the temperature. The thermostat controls the temperature. Thank you, Jesus. If you turn it up, it gets warmer. If you turn it down, it gets cooler. The thermometer measures the temperature. Anybody can be a thermometer. Anybody can be a thermometer. Good God Almighty. But God is calling our women to play the role as thermostats to show the world that there is a reality in serving God. He called you to be missionaries, to be deaconess missionaries, aspiring missionaries, evangelist missionaries, born again, women of God, ladies, live right. Ladies, pray right, walk up right. Don't let anybody turn you out. Don't let any woman hug all over you, feel all over you, touch all over you. I don't care if her hair is gray. Some things just ain't right. Protect your heart, protect your mind, protect your spirit. Don't let Oprah, don't let the classroom, don't let anyone else change your views. Stay with the Bible, live holy, and the Lord will anoint you. The Lord will give you power. who say I'm gonna be a holy woman. Since I'm at the women's convention, I'm gonna be a holy woman. I'm gonna be holy. I'm not gonna let the devil change my mind. 
I've been preaching to you about how the enemy will change your mind. And I can tell that some of you, the devil has got in your mind. You can't even say amen to scripture. You better let God sanctify your mind. You better let God sanctify your heart and tell the Lord, I come out here to stay until I die. Lord, use me to set the temperature. Lord, use me to set the church on fire. Lord, oh, 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 Lord, use me to be saved on the college campus to show the women I don't care if she has a hair cut like a man you show her that God made you dainty that God made you feminine that God made you holy yeah yeah ah, yeah Would you praise him, women? Would you praise him? Would you praise him? Let's go home, Rocky. Now under him. Now under him. That is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. You can ask to think according to the power on the inside. Who's gonna be a holy woman? Who's gonna let the Lord work his unlimited power? Unlimited power. Unlimited power. The preacher said last night is more than a house and a car and a raise. See, what if you got the house? What if you got the car? What if you got the money? So what, how do, how's the unlimited power manifest in holiness? In being a standard. In being a woman who's not afraid to swim upstream and to go to be counter the culture. To be righteous and glad that you are and don't care who says what. You know that holiness is right. You know that there's more to this thing. There's more to this thing than God giving you another material thing. I've often said, so back when all the rage was, God giving people a new car, a new this, a new that, and everybody serving the Lord for a car. I said, but now if the streets become like Dodge City, Everybody shooting and killing each other. Where are you going to drive the car? Yeah. Yeah. We got to save our race. There's a trend. See, this thing broke out, y'all. Blood's on our hands. This thing broke out. We had a 100% increase. Why we were trying to be politically correct. Why we were trying to be politically correct. Political correctness is nothing but a open door for Satan to do what he wants, to be unopposed because the power, the power, the power is revealed in words. Notice the medium God chose. In the beginning was the and the word was with God. Now, in the words, word, logos, immaterial intelligence, word. This is Jesus in his pre-incarnate state. He's, he's not referred to as the arm. He's not referred to as the foot. He's not referred to, he's referred to as the word. The power 
is in our word. And this is why the devil is working so hard to silence the preacher. Yeah. Yeah. To turn us. To make our words more appealing to the world. To make our words less convicting. I'm going to tell you something. Praise the Lord. To make our words, to, to almost frighten us. To send the message. We don't want that preacher. And while we're cowering down. In public schools now. They're bringing transgenders. See some of you all. Oh take your license. I mean, I'm in a position now where I can. I ought, to, I ought to yank them. Because you don't want to fight. While, while these transgenders. A man. Going into a classroom with children, these sunshine banners, and reading, and, and, and while in the class, you know what they're teaching the kids? They ain't teaching them ABCs. They're not going in there teaching them. I mean, it would be bad if they were teaching them wholesome stuff. Uh, a man dressed like a woman, it would still be bad. But they in there teaching the children how to twerk, how to bend over and shake their rear ends in, in, in school. In school. And then you're you, you going to sit on me. Because I'm trying to tell you, on, maybe somebody got you. These, these people, the reason your vision is so strong with these Sunshine Band, because you know who the world's coming after? The Sunshine Band. So, look, the devil know I'm too far gone. That, look, Wood is gone. He's gone. We ain't, we ain't going to get him. He's gone. These guys, they're gone. They're gone. But you know you're gone. You're gone. You're gone. You're gone. Niggas, you're gone. You're gone. Ain't nobody gonna tell you no why. You're gone. But I'll tell you who's not gone. Them babies that we saw dancing tonight. All of them that love the Lord, their minds are changeable. Where's where's your daughter? Where's your granddaughter that was over the dance? Where's where's she? They're still back there. She did a super job. Their minds, they can be changed. They can be changed. They can be changed. They can be changed. Can be changed. Wow. More uh, adult males uh, uh, and, and females identify themselves as homosexual or lesbian or LGBT between the ages of 18 and 34 than, than between the ages of uh, uh, 65 and on. Right. Because, see, that generation was already set. That's right. few years ago we, we decided that God didn't know what he was talking about and we ushered all this stuff in and now we're seeing it yeah. the, and the main people yeah. who are quicker to identify in, in that community now are the millennials yeah. because not because there's anything wrong with them but they were they're in a school system yeah. they're in a school system we dropped them off for eight hours a day where the school was teaching them against the morals of the church then they came to churches where the preacher was just preaching about material things. Yeah, that's right. So this stuff, in, in their minds, they were basically unopposed. When truth, when wickedness is unopposed, wickedness wins. I can turn you against that brother, and that brother has done nothing to you. If I just keep talking to you about that brother and everything I say is negative never mind it can be a lie I just make it up but if all you hear is from me and you and 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 that's not but you look at him, man's never done anything to you man never said anything to you all of a sudden now when you look at him you know what you don't even see him right matter of fact you see something wrong with him standing right there you say to yourself look at him he's not even with the program the man standing there saying amen Look at him. His spirit ain't right. Man's got a wonderful spirit. That's because the wrong things got in. That's it. So tonight, I want to pray for women who, number one, understand. See, I'm not going to pray that you be a barometer. You have no choice in that. You are one. You are one. 
And that is uh, a compliment to you. Because, you know, why would the black race be without our women? It's a shame the way we do our women. Write, write songs about them and call them all kinds of names. It's a shame. We're the only ones. We're the only ones who do that. We're the only ones. Black folk, we created rap. We're the ones started calling our women bees and hoes and skeezers and chicken heads and all that. We did that. And then, and then in wholesale numbers, in wholesale numbers. In wholesale numbers. Now, I'm not against anything, but in wholesale numbers. In wholesale numbers. Wholesale. Soon we got to the NBA or NFL or made it in the movies. Oh, wasn't nobody black good enough to marry. Next thing you know, there he goes with a blonde. I'm not against interracial marriage, but my point is, I am against the trend where all of a sudden you can't find nobody. Uh, uh, nobody that look like your mom is good enough? Nobody. And, and we, it's a trend with us. Yeah. I, just, I just tell the truth about it. It's a trend. Tell it, tell it, tell it. It, it ain't no trend of white men whole, wholesale marrying uh, black women. Some of them do, but it ain't the trend. The trend is us forsaking our own. Yeah. Well, pastor, are you against interracial in marriage? I just told you I'm not. But I am against the trend. All of a sudden, once you've made it, you forget your whole community. There's something wrong with that. And, and, and you know who talk? You know who talk to me about stuff like that? You know who talk about that? White men, white preachers. The trend on how we leave our church. You know, what white man said to me, said, said, said Reverend, we're getting all of y'all your best members. That's what they say. See, we don't know anything. And so it takes the preacher to just tell you. You know, know what he said? He said, we're getting all of y'all. Your, your best. The preacher, man, well, Reverend, your best is sitting over there with us. So we're, we're just looking at all of the black professionals who call themselves going to interracial churches and, uh, and all of them, they're just coming in. They're so glad to be with us. And, and we wonder, why, why aren't you at your own church with your own people? And there he goes sitting there grinning because he don't know any better. And I'm not against. See, so you have to hear me right now. See, so one of us why I have to stop and back up. I'm not against. You join whatever church you want to join. But I am against the trend. Because now one thing about them, they love the Lord too, but they ain't going to follow that trend. Because I hear from white folk, I'm the, I'm the hero of many. I get cards, letters, compliments. They love my preaching, but they ain't gonna join my church. They, they, they will tell you, say, I wish my pastor would say the things you say. Cause you say those things, Reverend. You just say the things. I said, by Lord, by God, Lord, you're using him. I want him. I wish my preacher was like you. Well, well come on and join. But we will walk away. We'll tell you, uh, Pastor, the Lord told me my time is up, my uh -huh. season. And we'll uh -huh. walk away uh -huh. and go sit right there and won't feel a thing. And in the meantime, in the meantime, our girls are being turned out. Gallup did a survey. No one Gallup. Uh, this was a uh, uh, Bonner survey. Surveyed 120,000, large health survey. And in that survey, Black men were 50% more likely to identify as homosexual than white men were. Now, I didn't say 50% of the men were homosexual, but the men who identified as homosexual, that blacks were 50% more likely. See, that we've got to preach, y'all. And you know what we got to do? You got to say amen. And you got to push. You got to support your leader. You got to support your church. You got to support your turf. Other people do it. They understand. I want to pray. I've been up long enough. Well, I'm, I'm going to leave. Uh, but if you, you are a barometer, that's my point. That's, that was my point. But, but here's what I want, what you want to be. I want to know. Do you want to be a thermometer? Or a thermostat. If you're a thermometer, 
You just reflect what is. You just relay the temperature of the society. That's all. But if you are God's thermostat, you can do something about it. We did something about that beautiful young lady right there. That baby is living. We did something about it. And she just won. We have almost 900 stories. And then linked up with love like we got thousands of stories like that. And counting. And gonna win some more. You know why? Because we're thermostats. And we're gonna heat it up tomorrow. God use me. Lord use me. Use me Lord. Use me to be that woman of God. Use me. I want to be a moral giant. I want to be a spiritual giant. I want to be thankful to you. I want to receive you. I want to reflect you. If I'm talking to you and you want God to use you, run to the altar. Don't walk. Run. Don't walk. Use me, use me, use me, use me, use me, use me, use me. In times like these, Lord, in times like these, in times like these, use me, use me, use me. You know, the enemy will have us calling this kind of preaching judgmental. It's not. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth that the devil don't want us to preach. But think about this. We got to do it. And you are so important. You are so important because God's going to use you to help save your own. You know what you saw when you were working in, in, in that group? You know, you right there. And I want you to know something. For those who are going to come down tomorrow, I was talking to a pastor today, a pastor in Texas. He says, Bishop, I'm starting my ministry uh, for the unborn. Amen. And uh, I said, Bishop, I'll help you. We got them inspired in Georgia. And see, what, what, what will happen is what these guys are doing, they're doing what we did with, uh, a few years ago, about eight years ago now. That was a question. The question was, where are the black people? It was the white people fighting for the lives of the unborn. The overwhelming majority at the clinics are blacks to abort their babies, white Catholics. And for years they were asking, where are the blacks? And when we go down there now, uh, some of the groups, say, they walk up to me, a guy walked up to me the other day, and I'll be honest with you, it offended me, he meant no harm, and I kept myself. I'm preaching, he tapped me on the shoulder, looked back, a little white guy, looked back and he said to me, I just wanna say thank you. I wanted to say, thank me for what? But my rage came down because the truth is he was right. So few of us show up that when they do show up, the white folks say, Phew, because they know that there is no evangelist like a native evangelist. That girl may look over and see you and see her mother. Our church mothers go down when they say, look over there and Lord, there's mama in there. Come here, baby. Let me talk to you. Right. What is the likelihood right. that she'll go over there right. and that, one, that mother will be much more effective than the bishop can be? Because now she ain't gonna tell, she ain't gonna tell that mother off. She's talking to her mama. Mama said to her, baby, you can make it. Well, mama, I'm scared. I'm hurting. You can make it, baby. God will keep you. I want to say to you ladies, don't let anybody, don't let 
anybody make you a fool? Don't you disagree with God? The context here is in the matter of sexuality. Why did I deal with this one? When God gave it to me, I didn't even know at the time God gave it to me that there had been a 100% explosion. That's why he had me to wait. And then the information came. I said, oh my God, you can help turn the tide. You can be examples to young girls. Certain things people don't joke about. I remember one time it was popular in the church, you know, folk... I'm getting ready to pray. They be in the spirit and you know, they just stand there crying and hugging each other and just praying. I, I said one day, y'all break that up. What's all this hugging all about? You don't hug no 40 minutes. No, I'm going to get a hug and let, thank you Jesus. Let it go. We ain't going to stay there. <laughs> it's four o'clock. You still lean on each other. No, that's too much. That's too much. Started at, started at three. It's four. You still hugging. That's too much. That's the, that's the devil. That's the, that's the devil. That's the devil. Father, since we're in a women's convention, and I know that in a sense in this message we went one-sided, but the, 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 we're in a women's convention. And Lord, I thank you for these women who have come to the altar on this kind of preaching. I didn't switch toward the end and try to make it more appealing with the lure of things. But we stayed with it and we appealed to women who want to be thermostats. Women who want to affect the culture not simply reflect the culture not simply reflect the temperature but women who are anointed to do something about it he could have shame i speak a word of blessings upon you right now those who are out there who are streaming tonight if you're praying with us we're praying for you too the blessings of God be on you that God use you to affect you barometers God use you to affect to bring about deliverance to change hearts and to change minds to turn people to the scriptures the Lord anoint you with a love of scripture the Lord anoint you tonight with the love to love the idea of being a woman of God. The Lord anoint you tonight to embrace being counter the culture. The Lord anoint you tonight to be above all political parties and to just hold God's hand. The Lord anoint you tonight, hallelujah, to be the Lord's voice. To be that woman at work who dares to be different. To be that lady in the neighborhood who dares to say, Thus saith the Lord. To be that lady in the family who tells mom and them that there's a better way. And that way is the way of the cross. To be that young lady who shows that there's a reality in serving the God of the Bible. The blessings of God be on you. Healing be in your bodies. The Lord touch you right now. The Lord touch you. The Lord heal you. The Lord deliver you. The Lord fill your purses. The Lord touch your children. The grace of God, the blessings of God, the favor of God, the anointing of God, the things of God, the things that you have up before the Lord. The Lord's blessings be on you. The Lord's blessings be on you. The Lord's blessings be on you. The Lord bless your children. The Lord bless your husband. The Lord bless your mom, your dad. The Lord bless your business. The Lord bless everything that has anything to do with you. The blessings of God be on you. The blessings the blessings of God be on you. The blessings of God be on you. The blessings of God be on you. Hallelujah. 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 As it is so, it is.
is so, it is so, it is so. Women, it is so. Women, it is so. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise him, ladies. Praise him, ladies. Praise him. And it is so. It will be manifested. You will see it. You will see it. You will see it. If I be a man of God, if I be a man of God, the blessings of God be on you. Hell, oh God, oh, the Lord revive your soul. The Lord revive your spirit. The Lord revive your mind. The Lord give you joy. The Lord give you power. The Lord give you peace. The Lord make you. The Lord make you. The Lord anoint you. The Lord anoint your mind. The Lord anoint your ideals. Let your thoughts line up with scripture. Let your ideals line up with scripture. Let your philosophies line up with scripture. Line up, the Lord line you up. Line you up, line you up. Line you up, line you up with scripture. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your word. The Lord heal your broken heart. The Lord heal your broken heart. The Lord set your soul on fire in the name of Jesus. Holy women tapping into God's unlimited power. Unlimited power. Unlimited power. The Lord bless your business. The Lord bless your ideas. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless. The Lord bless. The Lord bless. The Lord bless. Lord bless your husbands. The Lord bless. The Lord bless. The Lord bless. The Lord bless your hands. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. We rebuke cancer. We rebuke sickness. We rebuke disease. We rebuke the devourer. We rebuke every hindering cause. We rebuke. We rebuke. We rebuke. We rebuke. We rebuke. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Heal. Hey. Rebuke. We rebuke. We rebuke the glory of God. The glory of God. The glory be on you. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tonight's my night. Tonight's my night. Tonight's my night. Tonight's my night. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Tasha, 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 Tasha. Hey, 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 hey. Ah, the Lord revive you. You've been through a lot. You've been through a lot. You've been through a lot. But it is so. Woo! It shall come to pass. Jesus. 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 Ladies call him. Ladies call him. Ow! Oh! Ow! Oh! Oh! I want every lady to say, even we women shall walk in God's unlimited. Power. 